Hi, I am Mikio King and today I am presenting RunMeter. First, I'll give you a brief introduction to the product, followed by my evaluation methods, results, and some key suggestions for improvement. RunMeter is an iPhone application that continually records the time, location, distance, elevation, and pace of a user during a run. In addition, the application enables the user to compete against previous runs when following a very specific route. Recorded runs are ranked as either the best, better, median, worse, or worse, based on the average pace. The virtual competition is facilitated by customizable voice announcements that compare the user's current run to previous runs. RunMeter fits into the mold of a game for health in two main ways. First, RunMeter acts as an exercise journal by automating data input and by facilitating behavioral change. RunMeter uses the GPS capabilities of the iPhone to keep track of the runner and utilizes the data gathered to provide metrics and feedback. Secondly, RunMeter has certain components that make it a shared activity awareness application. Although these features were not extensively tested during this study, RunMeter uses Twitter as the platform to socially engage other RunMeter users and to share progress. In this way, RunMeter acts as a game for health by utilizing automated physical activity monitoring, self-monitoring, feedback, and assistive activity promotion. The goal of this study was to decipher the effectiveness of RunMeter's context-aware auditory motivation and also to determine if RunMeter was a good virtual running partner and coach. By looking at RunMeter as a motivational tool, I sought to compare the computer-facilitated motivation of RunMeter with other social motivations to exercise. In this way, the study analyzed the physical as well as the psychological benefits of RunMeter. The study of RunMeter was conducted in three stages. The first stage was the pre-intervention stage, where RunMeter was used just as a passive monitoring tool. The second stage, or the intervention stage, is where the auditory motivation was enabled. And then the last stage was the post-intervention stage, where the lasting effects of using the RunMeter was determined. The purpose of the one-week pre-intervention stage was twofold. During this stage, I sought to establish running as a routine part of my life, and also to set base times and speeds for specific routes. The intervention stage lasted about two weeks and consisted of running the established routes while receiving auditory feedback about comparative times and pace. I received announcements about every minute, and here is an example. Behind best, 34 seconds. Pace, 6 minutes, 30 seconds per mile. In the one week post-intervention stage, run meter was again set to just monitor and record my runs. RunMeter was evaluated using both qualitative and quantitative data. Qualitative data was gathered to determine the level of improvement in pace while using RunMeter. The metrics I gathered while running included runtime, rest time, distance, average time per mile, average speed, climb, calories burned, as well as the route I ran. Qualitative data was gathered to decipher the strengths and weaknesses of RunMeter. Using a 42 question survey that is a little too long to put into this presentation, my study sought to look at how social sources of encouragement compared to computer facilitated encouragement. The survey enabled me to analyze which aspects of encouragement RunMeter lacked and also allowed me to find ways to improve the application. I also maintained a journal in order to analyze usability issues and also other issues with the interface. The journal recorded my frustrations, problems, thoughts about RunMeter's ease of use, how much it motivated me, if I wanted to continue using RunMeter, and my level of exhaustion. I also used TTM analysis to determine if RunMeter was able to advance my level of commitment to exercise. Here are some of my results. This first graph gives my average pace during runs over time. As you can see, in stage 1, the pre-intervention stage, my pace was very inconsistent and much slower than later stages. This may have been due to the fact that I was unaware of my pace or simply because I was still adjusting to running daily. During the intervention stage, the graph indicates that I was running at a much faster pace, an indication that the auditory announcements were motivating me to run faster. In the post-intervention stage, my pace remained consistent around 9.5 minutes per mile. Here's a graph of the calories burned over time. Calories burned was an internal calculation that RunMeter made based on my weight, so the validity of the data is uncertain. Also, some of the data points were missing when I exported the raw data. Nevertheless, the graph indicates that I burned more calories in the later stages of my study. 
This next graph shows my fastest time during a run over time. This graph also suffers from many missing data points. However, it is interesting to see that my peak speed during runs decreased over time and my average pace got faster. This shows that I was able to maintain a more consistent pace during later runs. These next two pictures are graphs and visualizations generated by RunMeter. In the upper left is a graph that compares my initial run with my best run. As you can see, during my first run, my pace got increasingly slower, whereas during my best run, my pace stayed consistent and I finished my run at a fast pace. The calendar view on the right shows that many of my best times were recorded during the intervention stage. After performing qualitative analysis on my journal entries, I came up with six major themes. My journal entries suggested that there was a distinct advantage to the simplicity of RunMeter. Since RunMeter required very little user input, I never tired of using the application. During my runs, I used the iPod capabilities of the iPhone to listen to music. However, my journal entries documented how I felt my pace was being influenced by the tempo and intensity of the music. Many times, the auditory competition that RunMeter provided confused me. One minute I would be ahead of my best time, and then the next minute I would be behind by a large margin. These confusing messages made me very apprehensive about using the competitive announcements. RunMeter acted as a very effective pace tool. The auditory pace announcements gave me a sense of personal awareness and allowed me to keep more consistent pace. During the intervention stage, I had to consistently compete against my previous times. The constant competition became increasingly tedious as I set increasingly better times. Weekly competitions would be a better format in the future. Lastly, my level of exhaustion steadily decreased. This was most likely purely due to my consistent running measurement, but it was a welcome result nevertheless. Every time I ran, I rated RunMeter's ease of use on a 1 to 10 scale. The bottom graph shows that while I encountered some usability issues during the first and second stages of the study, I was relatively satisfied with RunMeter's usability by the end. Every question in the qualitative survey was answered as either never, rarely, a few times, or very often. This scale allowed me to find specific shortcomings of RunMeter's computer-facilitated motivation. Some of the major shortcomings included the lack of reminders, the lack of rewards, and the lack of exercise ideas and tips. The TTM analysis performed during the study proved to be not very useful. I used the chart on the left to determine my TTM stage before and after the intervention. Before the study, I had been running two times in the past month, so I had just entered the action stage. At the end of the study, I had just completed my first month of running, so I still was in the action stage. In order to determine if RunMeter truly had an effect on my behavior in terms of running, more time is needed. In terms of functionality, here are the ways in which I would improve RunMeter. First, I would ensure RunMeter monitored the user's heart rate. Not only would this measurement be useful, it would also allow for different forms of competition. I'd also add support for pace changes. This would give users the ability to strategically pace his or her runs. Personalized training schedules and goal setting would make RunMeter a more complete tool that motivates users. Integrating a performance social network would allow users to compete against other users, not just with pace and speed, but through other metrics as well. Different ways of scoring runs would also provide a reward structure that could further motivate users. Lastly, incorporating training tips would make RunMeter an educational tool. With regards to usability and the interface, I would first improve the way in which the user selects a route. Many times I forgot to set the route before my run, which resulted in a loss of data and competitive feedback. I'd also add a personal trainer mode that would provide feedback in the form of friendly encouragements and tips. The interface should also display more aggregated data to give a better overview of the user's progress. Other features that would increase the usability would be added online access support, summary announcements after runs, and a play music button on the main screen. Speech-based commands would provide better accessibility for disabled users. If I was designing RunMeter from scratch, I would integrate it with an exercise and diet journal. I would also add the ability to use RunMeter with a treadmill so that it could be used indoors as well. I'd use music as the main way in which users receive pacing feedback and would use GPS data to propose routes and connect users with other runners in the area. Lastly, I would monitor body and external temperature to provide suggestions about hydration.
Thanks for listening, and if you have any feedback or suggestions, please email me.